Hello, hello, it's Friday night. It's ask me a question night. And I better get my water closer. I need my water a little closer. So, yeah, it's Friday night. And you can ask me questions. I got six big questions. And I'll answer them. Give you guys a little time to come in. You know, Instagram has that big opening thing. And hello. How are you? I was just waiting to see if you guys were going to come in and who was coming in. So Friday night, ask me a question night. Did you have a question? So thanks for coming early. So let's give them a couple more seconds and then I will stop. So here you are. So where are you coming from? You can answer in the comments. Check chaotic. Oh, I saw you. That's right. I. I um I followed you I think today or yesterday I think so so that's wonderful thank you for dropping in so it's Friday night and I usually say have you know ask me a question night so tonight I had six questions the question of what question of what love what love oh yeah thank you what do you mean by question of what love explain it a little clearer and I will I will answer that too so don't I'm not going to shy away from anything so let me have a question like that explain yourself a question of what love so you have to explain what it is you're saying because love is you very big what kind of question any question you want to ask if you want to ask a question about love then ask me about what it is because most people ask questions about life studies finance what I did, how I do what I do, why I do what I do, what books I've read, what quotes I like, and stuff like that. So that's usually what people ask questions about, but you are free to ask me a question and I'll answer you. So it's really up to you. I have to take my, actually, my glasses off so I am able to see that, but I won't. So let me get my, turn off this crazy light. Yeah. So then I can put my glasses on and the reflection wouldn't be so bad. Let's see if that will work. Hi guys, I have to get my lighting in order. So hold on. reflection but I'll tell you what is fun my, my appointment is not until next in March and there's nothing I can do about that so everybody behind my glasses and my reflection in my eye so it's going to be fun tonight doesn't matter what I do I'll still get those reflections so here we are so my first question was what are you able to how are you able to transition or accept change so quickly without resistance. <laughs> Obviously, that person must know me well. Um, how are you able to transition or accept change without any resistance? So one of the things, the reason why Alan said glasses off and on, um, one of the things about change is that you know for sure there is nothing you can do about it. If you cannot do anything about it, then you have to look how you can you live with it. So that is one of the things that I really work on with change and stuff like that. I Something happens or I am in a situation where I have to make a difference, a change. I changed to suit myself and I usually use the prayer, grant me to accept, um, help me to accept the serenity, give me the serenity to accept what I cannot change. So once I come to that conclusion, I don't even go to the full length of the prayer. I just say, grant me the serenity to accept what I cannot change. And what I cannot change, I look on what I can do about it. I don't let things that I cannot change affect, affect my emotion or my mental state, my physical, spiritual, anything like that. I work to see what I can do. Can I do something about it? Can I go around it? I cannot change it, but I can react, see how it, I react to it. So if it's a situation where my reaction is going to count, I really believe in taking a deep breath and walking away. 
My, another philosophy I practice is make sure you live to fight another day. You can call choosing your battles and all of that type of stuff. But I prefer to reserve. And if I don't have an answer or I cannot change it, I'll come back. I'll be more aware. I'll be more prepared. But fighting something I cannot change at the moment is something that I've learned over the years through experience to react in a different way. So what I do for sure is I look at the situation. I usually just say, you know, I cannot deal with this. It's not something I can change. What can I do? How am I going to make it affect the rest of my life? And that is what I do. And if it's going to affect me in a negative way, I will pull back, regroup, and come back and deal with it from another angle. So that's the question, and that's the answer. But And that's why I accept the change, and I, you know, I just take it, and I go with it. Did you always have a growth mindset? Yes, I did. I always had a growth mindset. I always knew the world changes, things changes, new things happen, and you have to be on the treadmill. You must be in the action for you to be able to catch the growth that was happening around you. You have to be aware. It's like the world is awake and you cannot be asleep. If you are asleep, when the world is awake, you will not see the growth and you will not be able to get on. So as things change, you need to change. If you want to be part of this world, of this universe, of this planet, if you want to serve, if you want to enlighten, if you want to encourage. So I've always had that in me. I like helping others. And do, to do that, I have to be in a growth situation where I'm going to learn something new. I'm going to try something new. I'm going to share what I know. I was taught by my parents that knowledge is not just to keep. So what you know, you teach. So my growth mindset was to make sure that I can see better. Another thing, I wanted to always do better. I wanted to prepare myself for a better retirement. So that meant I had to study when it maybe wasn't cool for somebody at my age to take on this type of things. But I knew if I did, I was going to make more money, which would give me a better retirement. So I've always been like that, looking for the opportunity to grow and to share. Anything I learn, I always give it away. I'm always willing to let you go. I consider life as a, as a, <laughs> a human body or a vacuum cleaner. It sucks the air up or it takes what is on the floor and, and it releases air. If you block the back of the vacuum cleaner, it won't work. So you have to give it the opportunity to take it in and also to release um, air from another spot. So that's how life is. If I just took in, kept it to myself, what I know, what I learn, um, then I would be overloaded. I wouldn't have room for new things. So I prefer my cup to be half full than completely filled because then there's no room for growth. So that's one of the ways I handle that. Um, what is your mission? That one was kind of cool. I like that question. My, my mission is to enlighten, educate you, and encourage you. So I will let you know what is, and then I will um, educate you how to, when to, and then I will keep encouraging you to. So in the process of learning to do that, I, I created the five pillars of prosperity. So the five pillars of prosperity, if you have all those five pillars in, in good condition, good foundation, working, working together, um, supporting each other, then you're going to have a successful life. So the five pillars of prosperity are like the fingers on your hand. So you have mental health, mental prosperity, I call it, emotional prosperity, spiritual prosperity, physical prosperity, and financial prosperity. I found, I created those when I was just doing financial health, teaching people how to bring themselves to financial health. And that's when I created the five pillars of prosperity because I found out Sometimes somebody comes to talk to me about their financial health, but it's not only, it doesn't, it's, it's a symptom, it's not the cause. So the financial is what that was most, is affecting them hard now, because they're looking at it and they're seeing 
they're, they're not able to work physically, they're mentally not fit to work, their emotion is just gone there. And of course, their spiritual health might be weak, it might even be strong. But if one of these pillars are loose, as you can tell, if you cut one of your fingers, the other four don't work. So that's how I came to the conclusion and I created the five pillars of prosperity. Your emotional health is the response of um, high emotional prosperity is the ability to how you react to the information you just received. So you, you, get, you got fired, you blow up, or you made a mistake and you go crazy. Something happens and you just go wild. Somebody cut you off on the, on the road and that is your emotions coming into play. So that has to be healthy to the point you know, like you know, the, the song by Kenny Rogers, The Gambler, you want to know when to show them, when to run away, when to hide. That is what your emotional health teaches you to do. If it is functioning properly, and it's not rubbing against itself, you will know when to pull back. So that's emotional health, is how you react to what's happening at the moment. So what is the point of fighting with the cashier because there is a long lineup? But some people lose their cool in the supermarkets. A simple process. You have a choice though. You can leave the goods and go away. But standing there and getting everybody else in the line upset is that your emotions is taken and, and you get hotter and you get worse and it goes crazy and that's what it is. Your mental prosperity tells us the information we collect or we are given or we learn or we study, how we process it, to remember it, to use it later. So it's to be able to recall information you have that you need to apply at a different time or that you need to, to, to take it back now because you learned it yesterday and somebody's asking you a question about it today and you can recall it. That, that is your mental prosperity. Of course, you know spiritual, a belief in something bigger, greater, more magnificent than you. The God, the universe, something else, whatever you believe, um, that is your spiritual health. It gives you faith. It's your faith. It gives you a feeling of, I know I can. I'm going to get through this somehow, some way. The universe has my back. God told me I can. He's on my side. So that's your spiritual health coming into place or your spiritual prosperity. So, and then you come to physical. Physical could be you got hurt. So if you got hurt in an accident, for example, it will affect you emotionally. And it, of course, will affect you financially if you're not able to work. So you see how they're, in, they're interconnected. At that time, you are expecting perhaps a miracle. And you want to get healed and you believe God will heal you. And the healing isn't coming. It weakens your faith. And then, you know, it can affect you mentally. You're not able to remember the things you studied, the things you could apply for your job later on. So that's how... The five pillars are connected. Now, I use the word prosperity because everything you have in you and you have a lot of, you're prosperous in it. If you have good emotional health, you're prosperous. Because having prosperity doesn't always mean wealth in the form of money. It could be family, it could be friends. The word prosperity covers a whole gamut. So if your physical health is great you have prosperous physical health your mental emotional and you have a good faith and no matter what shakes you you stand like a you stand like an like an a and nothing will move you and then you have of course your financial situation is stronger and you're able to maintain and manage what you do with your money so that's my mission is to get people to take those five pillars put them together and let them work as a team now not one is not greater than the other. If one, if you lose one, if you crack one, the others will also feel the pain. It's just like the fingers on your hand. If you cut a finger, the other four sometimes is not able to do what you could do with it. So that's my mission. That's what it is. What type of account do you recommend a person save, saving the money in the bank? Okay. Um, well, in today's economy, savings account is really a way to put your money and keep it safe. Because the, the returns on savings account in a bank is not high. 
the, the, because what gives you a good return in a banking account is the bank able to borrow, to lend money to people at a higher interest rate. So the bank takes your money, gives somebody a loan, agrees to give you one cent, 1% 1 on a dollar, and they charge the person for that loan, they, which they use your money for 5%. They keep four and they give you the one. That is the agreement you made with them when you took and put your money in that account. Unfortunately, the lending rates are very low. Unfortunately for new home buyers and for people looking for loans for cars or whatever, that rate is low. So it's better for the consumer who's borrowing money to get credit at this time. The person who wants to invest in bank instruments, which I'm saying is like the bonds or the GICs and the term deposit, the, the, the interest rates are negligible. So because the borrowing rates are so low. So you have to have a savings of some kind. You must have a savings of some kind. It doesn't have to be thousands and thousands of dollars, but you must save in a bank account sometime. So therefore, it is necessary to have your money packed in an account in the bank. And that money you can use to do things for yourself. You save it properly, it's sitting there, it's not making any money. And you will perhaps be able to use some of it to go on a trip, buy a house, whatever it is. But you should always save money in a bank account. And it, it, the interest rates nowadays are nothing. So don't expect that. A bank, I'll answer just that question because, of course, if we were talking about investments, it would be different. Um, <laughs> when will you write another book? <laughs> that is a funny question. I don't know. It's a toss-up. I have the material. I, I should... Especially, I've been fooling around with the pillars of prosperity, and I think it's really important. I really believe in it. I really believe it's really great food for thought. I, I believe, and I have faith that it can help some people, somebody to understand why, for example, if you, if you don't like your physical health at the time, what you can do. And maybe that's why you, that's affecting you and you don't want to go to work. And, and it, it's just to let you know that those five things are important. They're so important because they complete you. They give you an opportunity to be successful. Um, you, you know what you have to look for. You have to know what you can zero in on, what needs to be fixed. So yes, that is my thought and that's my belief. That's what I'm working on. And it's, you know, writing a book is a, is a lot. You work on it every day and I don't know when it will be ready. But that is what it will be about, I am sure. There's others, but I think this one is going to be that. So, <laughs> what is your favorite book you read? Of course, my favorite, favorite book was Moby Dick. Moby Dick, an old book. <laughs> I love the story because I like, I, I just love how it ended. I love how, how the vengeance, what the vengeance did and, you know, losing your, your, your leg to a, a white, to a wheel um, and then coming back. It's, it's an amazing story. And I just like the, I like the idea of following the author. And, and going into his mind, I love, like, the picture doesn't mean a lot to me. Words mean more to me than a picture. So I, I look at the words and um, <laughs> you finally found me a question. What did you look at? What would I change? I, I have to remember this one and my food. Okay. Um, the Moby Dick was my favorite book ever. I liked other books. I like Nelson Mandela's books. I like Barack Obama, The Audacity of Hope, and it was the word audacity. The book is amazing, but just the title, looking at the, the words. So it's words. I see words. I don't see pictures. When I look at things, all I see is the word. Um, and so I, I, I like those books. I like books that, that just have something that shakes you. And that is what Moby Dick did. I also enjoyed The Scarlet Pimpernel. Um, you know, I, I like books like that. I am, um, and then the audacity of hope, Nelson Mandela's book. I, I I like books that has 
substance that tells a story with words. Uh, and the, the author did not take a picture to create the book. The author took words and feelings and emotion to create the book. And that's why I like those type of books. Um, what is your favorite quote and why? I, I like the quote from Gandhi. You must be the change you wish in the world. Isn't that gorgeous? I love Gandhi's quote. I, I, I just love that. Um, there's another one. I think it's by George Bernard, Bernard Shaw. I liked when he said, like, a life spent making mistakes, not only more, is more honorable, but more useful than the life spent doing nothing. I mean, just, just look at those words, eh? They're simple words, just a word. So you have to wonder what was in his mind when he said that. And you know he was, he was really, he was that type of, of, of writer or, or person that, that went after the, he went after the church. He, he, he did his thing. He was, he always pushed the, the, the boundary. And he said, the life spent making mistake is not only more honorable, but more useful than a life spent doing nothing. That's cool, eh? So I like that. And, and Michel de Motin had a nice one too. He said, he who fears he will suffer already be suffering because he is afraid. So that's basically what he said. Say, who, he, who, he who fears that he would suffer is already suffering because he's already fearful, which makes so much sense. So I like those quotes. But to be honest with you, I like some quotes. There are so many quotes. I like a, I like a, 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 a script that tells a story. As you, I love The Man in the Arena by Theodore Roosevelt. And, and it gives you, it wants you, I always quote it, I use it a lot. It's not the critic who, critic who comes, he said, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or how the doer of deeds could have done better. I mean, come on. You know, he said the, the, crit the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. It's the person who did the deeds that it that matter, whose face is marred, you know, and by dust and sweat and blood and who strives again and again. That is so good. So I love that. I love that. I love words. And then I love Rudyard Kipling's If. He wrote it for his son. And, and, he, and, and it's amazing. It's, it's, they're powerful. So I, I, I prefer these type of things to quotes. And I get um, passion from it, like emotion. I get that feeling of, wow, you could put those words together. If you can keep your head, he said to his son, when all men are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for them doubting you too. Come on. Can you imagine your father is giving you that type of warning? Growing up as a young girl, he made us read this, so we had to learn it. If you can wait, and he said, and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies or being hated. Don't give way to hating and yet don't look too good nor talk too eyes. And, and you know, and he said, there's a third stanza where he said, if you can heap all of your winnings and risk it in one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at the beginning and never breathe a word about your loss. And if you can force your heart and seeing you to serve turn, to serve you another turn long after they are gone. And so hold on, when there is nothing in you that says hold on. And if you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue. So, you know, he, he, he gives that to you. And in the second, he says, if you can dream and not make dream your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, and if you meet triumph and disaster, and treat those two imposters just the same. Can you believe that? And the third thing I love is the Deserata. I really love that. Again, the Deserata is amazing. Um, you know, he said, walk among the, you know, I forgot all of the words of it. But it's awesome. And, and it just gives you, 
you know, amazing, amazing feeling so that you can go there and get it. I, I should look it up because it's so good. So these are what I prefer a lot to quotes. I know a lot of quotes and I do use them, but I prefer them and I enjoy them. And so I like those things and I will find, let me find, if I can find the Deserata because it's so amazing. Yeah, Deserata. The Deserata, um, it, it, it's, the way it comes through to you, it said, it tells you, it said, how does it go coming up? Go placidly amidst the noise and haste and remember what peace there may be in silence as far as possible without surrender. Be good, be on good terms with all men. Speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen even to the dull and the ignorant for they too have a story. Come on, isn't that sweet? And it says, enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own career, however humble. It is like a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. And he said, exercise caution in your business affairs for the world is full of trickery, so different now. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high, high ideas and everywhere life is full of Heroism. So, you know, be yourself, especially do not feign affection, neither be cynical about love. For in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the glass. So, you asked me about love a while ago and you couldn't figure out your question. So, I'm going to answer. Um, what would you change in your life if you could change anything? Really? Not a thing. I love who I am. And if I change anything, if I could go back and change anything, I wouldn't be me. And because of that, I love me very much. I love the person I am. I love me with all my perfect imperfections. I love me just as I am. I love, I love my zest for life. I love that I see beauty in people. I, I love things. So no, I wouldn't change anything in my life. I, I, I wouldn't change it. If I change something, then I wouldn't be me. So it's not good to do that. So no, I love being me. Hi, you quite Patrick. And then you asked me another question. What foods do I like? <laughs> I don't know. I like savory. I like savory. I like trying new foods. I love, I love um, smoked stuff. I love, I, I eat meat. But I love fish. I love I love highly seasoned foods, not so peppery, but seasoned and with flavor. I love I love flavor. So I love savory more than sweet. I can have sweet, but I don't particularly care for it. I can have it. So it's um, and that's it. So any more questions on the these are the two that I saw you wrote, and then somebody asked about love over here. <laughs> I don't know why you guys do this to me. Um, why is it I always have a question about love? Um, <laughs> so you want to know what it feels like to be in love? Wow, that's deep. <laughs> I don't know, man. Being in love? Hmm. It's something to be... Uh, well, you know what it is, though. Love might be a mistake, but it's a mistake. It's a mistake we're making. That's number one. So don't shy from love. Personally, no. Love, oh, love. Love is just so amazing. To be in love, I don't think, what I, I don't understand, and I, and I believe perhaps it's because of the amount of, uh, of emotion and energy and passion I put into love, I don't understand how people keep loving people one after the other. I, I don't understand. I couldn't deal with that intensity as many times as some people do. To me, love shatters even your bearing. You know, you don't even know where you are when you're in love. When you're love. You, you don't know if you want to eat. You might want to sleep. If, you, if that is the love that makes your heart goes like that. And that was that is the love I experienced. So I don't understand that I couldn't do that over and over again. 
I, I don't think there is ever a time you can repeat that. But people do. I, I, I see that. I have friends that are in love like every year and it's amazing. They almost look like they're going to fall over and die. Um, so I, I love to me is just that thing. <laughs> it's just that thing. It, it's something you feel deep inside of your chest. And it, 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 it shakes you. It, it prevents you from, it can stop you from being you. Um, I don't know. And you know what, though? It does last a long time. People say that feeling goes away. It doesn't. Because you always have to remember what brought the two of you together. So, so that's one of the things I, I always try to remember and practice. Because as humans, we grow, we change. But then it's, it's really nice to close your eyes and remember. And that brings you back to reality. So yes, I, I love is worth it. It's, it's really worth it. Even if you made a mistake. You have to remember though, sometimes from that love, you had the co-creation of human beings. So when everything else fails, you have to remember without this person, those people that you love more than yourself wouldn't have been here. You know that for sure. Because that's the person you met. You couldn't change that. So again, going back to one of your questions, that is something you cannot change. You cannot change that. The, the love might die or the love might whatever. But those children came from that love. Or the time you spent together, that was, that was love. And th there's always a time somebody once said, you look back at it and you see it for the first time for how strong it was. And that's true. So yeah, so that's enough about love, right? And how many years you work in the bank? At TD Bank, 19 years and 10 months. 19, at TD Bank, 19 years and 10 months. I've been banking for 30 years, but 19 years and 10 months. So that was my last question, and I've been doing banking stuff for 30 years. But at TD Bank, 19 years and 10 months. Exactly that to the day. So that's it for the questions for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, I, I answered all. Let me see if I did. And I answered those you had on there. Um, did you have, okay, that the growth mindset, transition, what is your mission, what type of account, when will you write another book, what is your favorite book, Moby Dick, <laughs> um, what is your favorite quote, you know, I prefer having like the Deserata, the man in the arena, if by Roger, Roger King. But I have my quotes. I told you of the Gandhi, you must be the change you want to do, to be. I told you of George Bernard Shaw, um, that you, he'd rather see you lose honorable than never lose or try again and be successful. He doesn't see why you, you might as well keep trying and failing than never try at all. And then what is your favorite quote? That's it. So thank you for a wonderful evening, Friday evening. I hope you enjoy yourself. Thanks, Yoko and Patrick and Shamanix and all the others who did join. Have fun. Talk to you guys later. Bye.